Okay, we are going to go to my buddy Kevin's and do a little update on black hole action. Woo! He, as you know if you've been following the crazy saga, is doing all the cabinet stuff. And he has ordered stencils and he doesn't want to buy like two, three sets of stencils, so he's actually going to be making his own stencils from the example that he ordered from uh, Pinball Pimp. So yeah, he actually ordered all of the materials. I mean, that is quite the challenge, uh, quite the task he's taken on there to basically re replicate stencils. I mean, it's, you need, it sounds like he needs like a tracing paper, um, like three different kinds of papers, and I don't know, we'll have to try and get him to describe a bit of that process, because it sounds like it is a super challenge. And then obviously just the work to all the cabinets, and then um, he's got some paint on the one cabinet so far but yeah we're gonna do a little tour of that and see how that's coming along uh, in the meanwhile I've been working on the fishtails like I thought it was pretty much done but last night uh, Jay came over and thought we'd play a couple games and guess what now I'm having sound issues where the sounds cutting in, cutting out, it's being distorted sounds, it's being creepy sounds, weird sounds, loud screeching sounds. Sometimes the volume locks on and at, at like a maximum volume. It just uh, actually posted a video of that more, more for like, um, you know, diagnostic purposes, like so I can send a link to uh, my board repair guy, the pinball repair help group so they can see it. But it is posted. It's, it's a, I recommend, uh, if you can last through the squelching of it, you'll see how as soon as the ball drains and kicks in to the next ball, uh, it goes away, it's all fine, back to normal. So it's some sort of data issue, uh, we're thinking. I just put in my own fishtails soundboard into that. Fishtails and played one quick game before I left and I didn't have an issue yet but that's not conclusive at all. <clears throat> I need to play a, a lot more games to determine. So if the sound issue is gone, then I know it's the soundboard for sure, and then I will just send that soundboard off for repair. Uh, also, uh, I had my buddy Corey Cook, London Pinball, shout out, come over last night. Finally, I've been trying to get him over for a while to help me with my Nordomatic Explorer. I'll probably do a quick update on that eventually, but um, I was trying to fix the machine and I was changing some lamp sockets. It was working pretty good and then all of a sudden uh, it died. It just stopped working altogether. I took a couple good cracks at it, checking everything, voltages, fuses. I just could never figure it out. And I'm like, Corey is the EM expert. Um, so. I figured he'd probably sort it out in, in short time, so I finally got him over to do that. And uh, he was investigating for a little bit, but didn't take too long to figure out that the issue was actually just a bad fuse clip. So it was a little bit corroded. And when he was putting the fuse in just a little bit, things were working. When he clicked it in all the way, things stopped working so that was a little bit of a tricky issue I thought I tested continuity on all the fuse clips apparently I did not do a very good job of that or the fuse is just working at that time but yeah it was it was one bad fuse clip we replaced that high tapped it uh, and right now I think it's pretty much fully working so that is good news I'll be able to get a video of Nordomatic Explorer from Italy uh, get some gameplay action on that because it's just a weird unique Italian game and it's not very well documented if at all so I'll be doing that in the near future um, I'll keep plugging away on the fishtails but 
This is a black hole update for the most part, so we'll check out some of that action, and then I'll take you into the basement and show you what I did last night while Corey was over as well. So we'll talk to you in a bit. All right, we're here. Let's go check out the action. This is where all the magic happens. Yo, what's up, buddy? Yeah, we are live here at the Black Hole Warehouse. <laughs> Check out the action. So, holy shit, you've been busy. Uh, busy, busy. <laughs> Tell me what is going on here. Uh, these are the starts of stencils for the white. Uh, black is on. Um, learned a few things here and there, but painting blue and black. And now I'm working on white, so. So are these the original stencils or are these ones you're, because you're trying to replicate these, stencils? These are the originals here. Yep. These are the traced ones, okay. so I cut them out and then transfer them on to the blue. So huh. I did these all for black for all the ones. Okay, so you got to take the original stencil which is this, yep. put on tracing paper on top, trace it, trace it out, cut it all out, <laughs> cut it all out, then and transfer all that, then transfer it onto this. This is stencil paper. Okay. Then cut it all out. Uh huh. Then put the transfer paper on the thing, <laughs> take the back off, and lay it on. That is a process. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, uh, so you're basically making stencil kits now yeah <laughs> add that to your skill set that's uh, freaking awesome so wow look at this it is uh that is quite the operation so once i have the, the stencil made though then i can just transfer it onto the thing and then just cut them out so it was processed to get the original piece made right but then now not as bad so yeah look at this so that's looking pretty what why don't you like tell me all the things you've done with this bad boy because uh, i know it's been a lot this one was the one that was on fire <laughs> this one yeah this so, is the fire one so they took the worst one first yeah and decided to do it so that's probably a good strategy fixed all the smashed and the busted up pieces and then uh yeah so you like bondoed everything bonded everything fixed all re-glued everything was all torn apart and cracked so re-glued it all uh glued the whole bottom oh yeah everything so took all the wiring out and this then, was bare wood there was nothing left in no, this so this was actually the better wiring out of the other cabinet right so took all the charred pieces sandblasted everything yeah look um, all this metal so you like sandblasted it and then kind of spray painted it gray oh i know it's clear coated so it's uh oh so it's that's just the the metal itself clear coated yeah oh cool that actually has a nice look to it yeah look at that. So, and then all this stuff's been polished all this stuff was all black and polished the heads of the bolts look at that uh, it's like nice corners all nice metals yeah all the backs and Ooh, that's a really nice piece of trim there too was that one that was dented at first uh it was it was all bent up on the corner so you fixed all that you actually fixed it or yeah. Wow. So yeah, this this cabinet and all its hardware is basically the best out of two cabinets, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Look at that. So. So once I can get the white on, then we can reassemble the, the door and all that stuff, and then start working. Heads ready to get going on. It's been gutted. Yep. Look at that. Huh. There's remnants of a black hole, black circle, yep. where the disc was. And then the head. And there's, the that's the, the that's all the rest of the hardware yep. that's going on, that's going on. Yep. So this has already been sandblasted and cleared. Yep. And that's part of the other frame for the glass. Definitely was handy having all the extra spare parts because well, you've definitely utilized them. And these are the 
two front frames. Ooh, that is pretty. So those are. That one doesn't have a glass in it yet, but this one has all the infinity lights and everything. Those are both the pieces for the same head? Uh, or are they two different heads? Two different heads. Okay. One for each machine. Okay. Yeah, look so at I'll that. Put this one together. That is beautiful. It's got like a subtle mirroring to it too, eh? Yeah. And we but think that there's two different colors, like a silvery-ish and a goldy-ish. But that could just be the lighting. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell. It looks from which way you look at it, one's gold and one's silver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's looking beautiful. So, yeah. so hopefully I can give you this one to put together. Yep. I actually... Uh, had Corey over yesterday and uh, he fixed my like Nordomatic Explorer machine and he's like what else you got for me I'm like I don't really have much else so I was like I don't know why don't we plug in the rest of these connectors for the black hole so I did that and oh I got to do a video update I'm not gonna spoil it so I'll, I'll do it off camera I'll tell you what happened if there was uh, any issues <laughs> but uh, so yeah Corey was over yesterday Tinkering with Nordomatic Explorer, and then we kind of tinkered with uh, some black hole. But yeah, so this is what's going on in the, the garage. All kinds of stuff, but you're nearing the finish line on cabinet number one. It's friggin' beautiful. Look at that. That's gonna be so pretty. All right, um, we'll keep you guys posted though. Okay, back at home and thought I'd give you the update here um, what I did since the last time was basically just you know hooked up the thousand connectors between the uh, lower play field and the upper play field and all the uh, other good stuff the one two three four five six boards in the back box so they are all hooked up now everything is in its place connected except for the motor um, so i've already kind of done this already i kind of know what to expect but uh, i didn't do it live because Corey was over and we were just kind of messing around and then after the fact I'm like oh I probably should have recorded that live so you know I dealt with all that doubled and triple checked everything got my ground connections here they run to that ground plane in the front and let's close this up Like I said, I already did all the connectors inside the cabinet, uh, which there are several. Um, I think there's three for the main play field and another three for the lower play field. Then I threw in some balls and then we turned it on. And here is what happened. Uh oh, bad things. Oh, that's interesting. I just got a weird humming and no displays. It's like the CPU didn't boot up. Let's try that again. Oh, interesting. Ah, this is kind of what I was expecting with this game is to uh, have lots of problems. But <laughs> when we uh, set this up and turned it on on Thursday a couple days ago, it was pretty much fully functioning. I mean, their only issues were this drop target bank was not resetting. This slingshot was just rapid firing a little bit. I got to install my pop bumper board still for this upper play field. And I think that was really it. Obviously install new balls and then I got to wait for my rubber washers from Pinball Resource to install the window and I also ordered a new plastic set. Other than that, it was working. So let's just take a quick peek in there. I mean, I don't really... Uh, 
Uh, I have no idea really. I mean, just opening and closing the door and kind of you tug on these connections, right? A little bit, but I just don't think that's it. Um, well, what I'm going to do then is unplug the CPU. Let's just quickly test these voltages on the power supply and see what's going on here. We'll do some live diagnosis. All right, you've seen me check power supply voltages before, I believe, and it's pretty straightforward. Let's uh, see what happens here. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn it on in order to do such. I wonder what the buzzing is. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to disconnect this harness. This is a little suspicious to me. Actually, I don't think since the CPU is not plugged in, that wouldn't matter. But that's just going to... Uh, disconnect all of the solenoids and stuff. Okay, we still get the buzzing. So is that coming from the soundboard? Okay. What we're going to do is unplug the soundboard. Although... Uh, although, I think since this was disconnected, that would feed the soundboard, no? Or maybe the power supply for the soundboard. We'll disconnect that. Hey, what do you know? No more buzzing. Oh. What do we got going on here? Are we... Okay, we won't have displays. Or will we have displays? Because I don't think I disconnected those. Nope, nothing. Okay, so... Let's... Go back to the power supply. So unplugging the soundboard obviously got rid of the, the weird buzzing. But the thing is that the CPU is not booting up. So maybe the soundboard was crashing the CPU. I have a feeling these voltages are going to be perfectly fine. But uh, let's check them anyway. Okay. Common is... Where did that go again? Na, 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 na. I could use some more space. I didn't give myself uh, much of an opening here. Test point five, test point one, test point three. Common, there we go. Okay. Test point one. I don't know. Can you see the multimeter? You can only see the top. This is the 60 volts. We're getting 64 volts. This is the 5 volts. We're getting 5.08. And this is... What else we got? Uh, I should, like, just really circle the test points or something. There's, they just... They blend in so well. This is 42 volts, and we got 46. And then... Oh, this is 8 volts. Which is fine. Okay, so I have a feeling that the soundboard was crashing the CPU for some reason. So let's turn the machine off. We'll hook up everything but the soundboard. I did the ground mods on this connector. Uh, so that should be good. And then the, all that's disconnected now is the soundboard and the soundboard power supply. Now, Let's turn it on and see what happens. Hmm. We don't have... Oh, I forgot to connect the CPU. That's why. I thought there was something else. Okay. Let's connect that. Machine is off. Now. I have pretty good hopes for this. <clears throat> Seeing as how there was a big buzz, now there's no buzz. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's the power on thunk. We do gotta wait. There we go, we're powered on. 
and everything's happy. Okay, <clears throat> I wonder, uh, I didn't really wait the full seven seconds when I powered it on with the buzzy soundboard, so maybe that was just me not giving it enough time. But I like what I'm seeing. So I read something about that in the programming, they, uh, this relay here, they kind of programmed it to be in sync with the uh, attract mode. And that was a bit of an accident. This gate is not supposed to be going back and forth. Um, it was a programming mistake. It's just, it's going on and off with the GI. Oh, not that GI, what GI? The lower playfield GI? Yeah, I think it's in sync with the lower playfield GI. So if your gate is doing that, that's just normal. I think there's a way to fix that. But look at this, everything else is good. Let's uh, hit the start button. Shit, we're not gonna have sound. You know what, I want to, um, I want to plug the soundboard back in now and give it another try. And you know what? If that doesn't work, I've got another soundboard. I have a feeling that maybe it's this rare SC-01 chip. Uh, my board guy said that one of the three soundboards has a loud SC-01. But when I tried it on Thursday, it was perfectly fine. So, is it intermittent and loud? Okay. We're not going to do the motor because I actually know that the motor, I think, is just simply not working. Or it's making noise or something. I think maybe all the brushes are toast. Okay. Sorry. I hope I'm not too jittery here. I should really be more conscientious of moving the camera around and make your viewing experience a little better. Okay. So effectively all I really did is reseated the soundboard cables. That's what this whole process ended up boiling down to. Maybe that was enough. Maybe it did nothing. Okay, here's the buzzing. Now let's give it a bit of time to boot up. Ah, so it would have booted up if I had waited, but I never heard that loud hum before. So this must be that soundboard that has the background buzz, but why did it not have it on Thursday? Anyway, other than the buzz, we'll see what happens here when we start a game. Okay. Well, we got sound. And now we have to see if we can get speech. I think if we um, go down to the basement, then, uh, oh wait, maybe if we hit these targets down. No, let's hit this. Open our gate. I love how pretty much everything is working though. Uh, one thing I want to see is A, if we get speech when we go into here, and B, if my 313 bulbs come on in the lower play field. I didn't notice that last time. Okay, let's hit the spinner. Go into the basement. Did my lights come on? Oh, okay, we got our speech. Did you hear that? So that's cool. Um, let's set this down for a minute and try and uh, play some lower play field action. And I need to know if those lights are coming on. Okay, here we go. Oh, what? Whoa. My lower, my lower flippers didn't enable when I went down there. So uh, maybe I didn't, do I need to light the gravity tunnel first? Shoot captive ball? Oh, captive ball. There's no captive ball. Shoot captive hole? 
Okay, let's uh, spin this. Then go down here. And then. No, my lower playfield clippers are not activating. They were on Thursday. Why are they not now? Okay, so I got some tweakage to be doing, of course, but this is really a good start. So I'm happy with this progress and I'm going to keep plugging away and try and get this uh, lower play field working. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe a fuse blew. Is that possible? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to look there. Anyway, that's the black hole update for the day. And uh, well, I will continue to keep you posted on this crazy black hole saga. Ah, uh, it was something so simple. It was me. I didn't hit the switch up here before I went into the hole. So I didn't know that it was going downtown. So now let's get back to the black hole right here. Okay, so I hit the spinner just to register that switch, then hit this switch, and then go down. And look, my 313 bulbs are nice and bright. Got some cool sound effects. We got speech, we got sound. Oh, I hit the captive hole. That's what it was saying, hit the captive hole. All right, let's uh, go back down there one more time. These are the drop targets that are not resetting, just for fun. <laughs> Should do like a whole uh, gameplay video of just the lower play field. Let's try and get all these drop targets, the yellow ones. My pop bumpers work down there. Let's try and get this uh, this pop bumper, see if that registers. The top one, hey, up oh, there we go, beautiful. I remember to install the pop bumper boards, oh, on those guys. And my uh, re-entry solenoid and tube and everything is working beautiful, so. Excellent.